R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett. Let's go, RJ. And for whatever reason, this man just does not like the Indiana Pacers. I don't know if RJ Barrett got drafted and read the book of Knicks and saw, you know, the history of the Knicks and saw the Reggie Miller and Spike Lee uh, history. And he said, you know what? For as long as I'm wearing this Knicks jersey, I will forever be a Indiana Pacers killer. Because yesterday was another example of that as RJ Barrett went off for 19 points in the first quarter, leading to 32 points for the game. And then on top of all that, Julius Randle came back from health and safety protocol, which had a lot of you guys very upset because you guys were thinking, oh, this is the end of the good times. Julius Randle is back. Which would have me feeling that way was when Tom Thibodeau rolled back out this lineup. And then I was like, oh, so we just going to go right back to what wasn't working, are we? And it almost didn't, but it did because we ended up winning the game 104 to 94. But I'm not done talking about RJ Barrett. And Julius Randle. We gonna give some love to Julius Randle as well after yesterday's game. A lot of love to be spread here today. Some criticisms. But we gonna stay into the positive today and get a little bit of those criticisms out of the way as well. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to the video. Run the intro. What's going on, CK Cruise Boy, CK2K? Welcome back to another video if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell do not forget to like this video also make sure you subscribe over to cktv which is my other channel my entertainment channel where we stream every when monday wednesday and friday unless the knicks play on that day meaning that we will be streaming tonight be over there and join the conversation and game with your boys a lot of fun over there on that channel the knicks won 104 94 now mind you this was a very beaten up indiana pacers team that like everyone that we played so far this season fought the entire game and i'm especially in the game where we're watching a guy like kyler want kyler sykes i think was his name kiefer kiefer sykes my apologies all respect because you killed our knicks yesterday so kiefer sykes that boy went out there and played 38 minutes after after having 14 total points in his first two games for the end pacers before the knicks then goes out for 22 points against us in this game not only that Dwayne Washington Jr who I only learned about from 2k literally maybe a day or two days before yesterday's game on 2k and that's as much as I knew about him and the next thing no he's out there scoring 17 points against my Knicks the following night so we can sit here and be pessimistic about the the win because we only won by 10 against a, another G League squad but the point of the matter is a win is a win is a win is a win because the Knicks right now cannot be choosers when we're out here begging for wins especially in the garden i know how weird that sounds but we are 8 and 11 in the garden this season so anyway which way we can come out with a win i will take it i will take it sticking to the negative for right now before we get into the the shower of positive for the rest of this video let's talk about the new york Knicks shooting a little bit shall we we did shoot 49 percent from the field but we shot a very embarrassing 21% from the three-point line. We saw Grimes go one for two um, off the bench. We saw quickly only make one of his four. And then nobody else made a three from the bench unit. Only Julius Randle and RJ Barrett were the only ones to make threes. Two for five for RJ, two for seven for Julius Randle. Yes, Julius Randle did put up a lot of threes. But ultimately, both Jules and RJ Barrett both went 12 of 20 in this game. So it doesn't matter which way. It worked out. They were good threes. They're just still not falling and i have the question of why is this the case we are getting the open shots and i understand they don't hit every single night but it's been three nights in a row so then i'm looking at this and i'm thinking are we not working enough now it could also be the fact that a lot of these guys were in health and safety protocol and are just coming back so they're getting their groove back a little bit i get that but at the same time if you're open at home where you know that everybody is with you how are we not making these damn shots are we not in the gym enough anybody in a knicks uniform especially in a game like this where we're itching and we're so thirsty for a win it feels like any three made in the garden has that same effect whether it is julius randall rj bear or even evan fournier it feels like anytime a three goes in it has that effect that it can start a momentum for this team and unfortunately we don't make our damn threes we're 21% in yesterday's game. I think we were 19% against OKC the other night. I mean, yeah, the Toronto game, we were a little bit, we were much better from the three. But 
when we get these open shots, especially being assisted by Julius Randle, I feel like Julius Randle and RJ Barrett should have had way more than the assists they had. RJ only had three assists. Julius only had four assists. And I feel like all those were from um, shots around the rim. All four of Julius's are probably to RJ Barrett, which we're going to talk about in a bit. But that's why our assist numbers, I also believe, are a lot lower than what they could be because we are getting these shots and they are coming off of passes but they're not going in and this is from somebody who was looking at this team and knows that there's a lack of ball movement with that starting lineup but yesterday you saw the ball moving it just wasn't going in and this has been the case for the last three games so what is that is there not enough shooting going on in the gym and hey, you can't tell me that they've been working on their defense because yes the defense has been better but it's still not at that stopping pace that it's been like last year you know it's not at that 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 rate we need more shots being put up I mean, that's what I'm expecting. I just mentioned all those play those those four players that made threes. Literally only four players on the Knicks roster yesterday made a three-point shot. None of those names were Alec Burks. Now, Alec Burks played good yesterday, but going 0 for 5, not used to that. And then don't even get me started by Evan Fournier. He had zero points for the night. <laughs> Sending three million dollars to get zero points. <clears throat> Y'all already know how I feel about Evan Fournier. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna sit here and bash Evan Fournier for the entire video, but zero. But luckily, 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 RJ Barrett and Julius Randle both had the game that they had at the same time. You guys know I've been calling for it in these videos for these two guys, these two gentlemen to play at this level. We saw what Julius Randle can be. We saw the player that he was last season and we also seen in spurts the player that RJ Barrett can be, but it always felt like it was one or the other. In all these other teams that we see that are good, successful teams or teams that are on the way of success, their best, their best players normally have good games at the same time. And it felt like for us, it was never the case for that. It was always a Julius Randle game plus a, you know, a somebody else doing it, whether it's Derrick Rose, Alec Burke, something like that. But it's never Julius Randle and RJ Barrett and then somebody. And I feel like that is a big key and a big proponent to us not being as successful as we wanted to be this season. It's always one or the other or both of them were trash. It was, it's been that way all season long for us. We can talk about chemistry. We can talk about lack of getting in the gym. We can talk about all those kind of things that you want to talk about but the point of the matter was if these are your two best players we need them to show that they can do what they do individually together and i feel like the big change for rj barrett was understanding that he is the second option in some cases the first option on this basketball team as long as he understands that and plays with that confidence then i think the rest is history we saw rj basically show and what what he learned in those two games against okc and toronto in this game, we saw RJ Barrett being aggressive, drawing a foul. We saw RJ Barrett getting the jump shot to go down. We saw a nice midi off of a screen coming from RJ Barrett. We're seeing all of these things that we've been looking for from RJ Barrett to happen more consistently happen in those games. And that is what we all been asking for. This is all we've been asking for. We know that there's been situations where the referees are not calling the fouls on RJ Barrett. Yes, we know that that is the case. I get that. But nights like last night are exactly what a lot of us have been waiting for him to see. I've been saying it. You can check the film on Knicks Fan TV. I've been saying it all the time that I understand that the numbers have been low. The percentages have not been great for him since he's been a Knicks uh, player around the rim. But that's who he's been his entire career of playing basketball, whether it is Duke or whether it was Mount Verde Academy. The guy is very, very, very creative around uh, finishing around the rim. That's how he always got a bulk of his points because he never was really a shooter. That's what he did and had a good percentage. But once he put on the next uniform, it's like that all went away. And now in this three game sample size, you're seeing that it's coming back out. People are getting surprised. Oh my goodness, he's going to his right. Oh my goodness, he went from left to right. He is switching his head. Like People are getting surprised by it, but that's who he is. I don't know if the confidence got lost in the in, in the process coming here maybe he was focusing too much on his jump shot that he wasn't working enough at the for uh, on his uh inside game i don't know what the case might have been but this is who rj barrett has always been and i want him to come back to that and now bringing that element of being able to draw these fouls whenever he wants he should be at that level of some of these other dudes of being able to go into the paint and draw a foul every single time because he draws contact that is what his game is and to see his confidence still be there when julius randall came back that is a great sign like this is this is what i want to see more of and this is who i know he's gonna be and i was always afraid that we would never get to see it because the other guys were stunting his growth and this and a third but i was also saying rj needs to go out there and get it 
and he did and you can see that the garden was in unison was just so happy to finally see that this is the guy that a lot of us have been putting our necks on the line and believing in while some people are starting to jump ship and saying that he's not this he's not that and the minute that he was playing the way that a lot of us believe that he can be i don't care who we're who we're up against we need wins but we know that he is playing the way that he can be this is what happens. He gets serenaded by the crowd. He even commented on it. You know, it was cool. Uh, it was cool. Uh, de definitely in the garden. Um, you know, hearing the crowd chant your name is a lot of fun. Uh, but, uh, you know, definitely. So blessed you know i'm blessed that i was able to to do that i want to see it continue we got the boston celtics tomorrow another team that he typically plays pretty well against i want to see it continue and it's going to continue if he keeps being aggressive inside out play that is who rj barrett needs to be for his career i know people want to see me a three of d no i want to see him be an inside out threat that is who he can be starting from going to the rim and then working the jump shot because then people are going to be guarding him for the for, for a drive and then he's able to make his jump shot whether it's a mid-range or a three-point shot we saw a few mid-range shots in that game alone i can go on and on and on and you guys know but i will also be with some of the the rj band rj barrett haters and i will agree with this sign do it again <laughs> now he's had a three game stretch of great games we saw this this is what he does he loves the second half of the season he, the, the minute that that calendar turns into a new a new year he loves to play basketball we've seen this every year of his career but I want to see it this season, right now, continue. Keep it going. What happens in this Boston Celtics game? We need to keep them going. We're 18 and 20 right now. We don't want to get too far under 500. We need the wins to keep coming. So will, how will RJ Barrett respond? That's what I'm waiting to see. I believe he will, but let's wait and see. And now let's talk about Julius Randle before we get out. Because Julius Randle was nice. Now, even though there was moments when the, the crowd was chanting for RJ Barrett and Julius Randle took it upon himself to make sure that the moment was about him taking some of those four threes at the end of the game. For the most part, Julius Randle was phenomenal. The way that he let the shot come in, the way that he worked through RJ Barrett, he saw RJ was hot and he was getting him the ball. That is an evolution right there, people. He was not doing that. Julius Randle never, ever, ever would would go to RJ. There was games where we, we could talk about from now to Wazoo where RJ Barrett would have zero point first halves and would have to get the bulk of his points in the second half or he'd have phenomenal first halves and would never get the ball back this game was different and you can see julius Randle was trusting his running mate in rj barrett and those are the two factors i think we need is rj barrett going and getting it himself and for julius Randle to understand you cannot do it by yourself put the two of those together and you see what we got last night now i understand you guys are there saying but ck it was the pacers i get that but you gotta build habits i don't care against who it is you got to build these habits and i feel like last night we saw those habits start to be built now what happens against the celtics what happens against whoever we play next that is what i want i want the consistency and i want to see us keep it going i think julius randall can i know rj barrett can but will we see that in the sample size i'm not worried about you know quickly only or grimes only having three points quickly you know being three for ten i'm not worried about that stuff they're going to do what they have to do. Obi Toppin only playing nine minutes is a travesty. I understand Julius Randle was phenomenal, but I do believe that Obi could have got some of Gibson's minutes along with Mitch Robinson playing a little bit more. But most importantly, the fact that we finally have our two best players playing well at the same damn time. That is a sight to behold. And we can see what the potential of this team could be if they do that more frequently. <laughs> hold on anyways that is my take i don't want to go too long on this because to me the main thing about yesterday's game was the fact that these two guys were able to do it and how it happened rj barrett's aggression and confidence in his game and julius randall being able to still play his game and understand he does have a running mate in rj barrett maybe we'll see more of the handoffs with rj rather than all the billions of times he's done it with evan Fournier and it resulting in nothing maybe he understands that rj barrett is that guy that he should be doing this with when rj barrett was going the defense went to him and that made it only easier for julius randall to get off what julius randall got that's what we want to see 
That's what I always want to see. Even the biggest Julius Randle hater could say, if they're seeing him go to RJ Barrett a lot more while he's still getting his points or whatever the case may be, three turnovers yesterday, first game back, I'll let you, I'll give you that slide. But if you're seeing him able to ref, to defer to RJ Barrett, I'm sure a lot of us would be a lot happier with it. 30 points for Julius Randle, 14 rebounds, 16 rebounds, excuse me. And we saw 32 points for RJ Barrett and eight rebounds, both of them shooting 60% from the field. Phenomenal game against the lowly Pacers. Let's see it continue now with when the, the competition starts to ramp back up. What's your guys' thoughts though? Will the two of them be able to keep this thing going? Is this a one-time thing? Is Julius Randle going to go back to where he was? Is RJ Barrett going to go back to where he was? Or will the both of them continue to play well in the second half of the season? It's not the second half yet, but you know what I mean, in the new year. Let me know your thoughts about everything in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, do not forget to like this video. People, please, 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 please go check me out over on CKTV. Yes, we game, we watch comedy. It's a lot of fun over there. It's a more chill, vibe over there make sure you go subscribe be a part of that it's a lot of fun over there if you want more ck i'm over there all right i'm out of here y'all catch you guys in the next video let's get it like i said i said my piece now i'm gonna hear y'all let me know in the comments below i'm out of here peace. Cold peace i got food up in the fridge y'all keep looking for that new way I think I like it how it is